How about the helmet of salvation? It must be worn. Don't just carry it around. Don't know a lot of cute truths about the Bible. Apply them. I can't wait till we get to that. Did you know what the helmet of salvation is? Understanding the gospel. Understanding what Christ did. And, and preaching the gospel to ourself. And when Satan tempts me to despair, upward I look and see him there, as the hymn writer said. I remind myself of the truth of the gospel. I'm wearing the helmet. I'm holding the shield. And I'm, look what it says about the sword. It has to be used. Take the sword of the Spirit. So basically, you and I, every day, can see God extinguishing the darks. Okay, now don't try and get this because I'm doing a big version, but I, I want you to see the whole map. When faced with besetting sins and bad habits or fear and depression, what I did is the big seven. You know, there are seven cardinal sins. You know, uh, the Catholic Church talks about, well, I just did the big seven. Um, besetting sins and bad habits, almost everybody has one or both. Either a besetting sin and some bad habits or just a lot of bad habits that are developing into besetting sins. Fear and depression. Why is this the most repeated negative prohibition in the Bible? Because we are like sheep. We're easily spooked. We're easily fearful. We fear everything. We fear the future. We fear the past. We fear the present. We fear our health and money and people and, uh, and depression. When you meditate on your fears, it spirals down and you start believing it. It's kind of like a self-fulfilling storm that is, you know, tornadically pulling us downward. So when faced with besetting sins, believe God's word. When faced with fear and depression, believe God's word. When faced with, with my words that aren't edifying, let your speech always be with grace, seasoned with salt. Uh, set a watch at the door of my tongue that I sin not against you with my lips. Uh, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. I believe God's word. I say, you can set a watch at the door of my mouth. You can make me appropriately use my gear here. I only have one mouth and two ears, so listen a lot longer than I talk. And, and, and I can allow you to salt and grace season my words. So I'm at a juncture. And I'm talking about things that not only are not edifying, they're defiling. And I can say, Lord, set a watch. Stop that. Stop me. I surrender my tongue, my mouth, my voice to you. Let me hear and speak little. Let me allow your spirit to energize my words. Uh, when, when faced with the lust of the flesh, all the cravings, uh, they're not all sensual. Uh, uh, the Bible has much to say about what we would call spiritual discipline in our lives. Uh, there are many lusts, but those cravings, especially the sensual ones, are very dealt with in the scriptures. Uh, the pride of life, this, this our own way and wanting our own way and wanting to promote ourselves instead of promoting God. Pride is when I'm more concerned about promoting myself than making God great. And, and we can... We can promote ourselves in any venue, whether it's ministry or the world or sports or the arts or business or life or a family or a marriage. We just, we're, we're constantly hit with these three. Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. That's what 1 John 2 says are the three starters. You know, when you have sourdough, you have the starter in the, you know, the, the dough starter in your fridge and you feed it and then you use it and it permeates. These are the starters for all sins. All sin, the starter for them, either they're motivated by the lust of the flesh or cravings, the pride of life, the centrality of me to my life, or the lust of the eyes, materialistic, finer things. All are sin. When those, when those dominate when I'm consumed by materialism, consumed by myself, or consumed by my cravings. So when I have the lust of the flesh, I believe God's word. And it always works. Always. To extinguish the dart of the moment. It doesn't extinguish lifetime darts. It extinguishes them as they come. See, God wants us holding his hand, walking through life with him. When the pride of life comes, I don't want to glory in my wisdom or might or, or possessions, but glory in the Lord. And I want 
in my life to clothe myself with humility, Colossians 3, 12 to 14 says. Humility is kind of like an outfit we wear. And we either choose to put it on or not. And when we put it on, it's reflective. It absorbs us and reflects God. And he increases and we decrease. And it's kind of like Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch. Philip was the agent of God. And he comes and shares the gospel. The Ethiopian eunuch gets it. And he leaves Philip in the dust and goes on rejoicing. And God spirits Philip away to do it again because Philip had decreased and God had increased. And God could drop him in a situation and he could be a catalyst and the tool God used and he could go on to another and that person didn't get stuck to him. They went out into ministry. And that, that's amazing to clothe yourself with humility and to humble. It's a command in James 4. Humble yourself in the sight of the Lord. How about wasting time? You know, it says in Psalm 119, we're going to look at this. In fact, Psalm 119 has 83 clear requests for God to deliver from something. They're all preceded. It's a, it's a verb and then a me. Deliver me. Quicken me. Uh, turn away me. Open my. You know, all the way through. It's the most amazing clarity of how to not waste our time. Do you know what this one is? Turn away my eyes from looking at worthless things. Can you imagine standing before the judgment seat of Christ and saying, I watched 114,000 minutes of YouTube videos. And the Lord says, put it on the conveyor belt. Let's see how it does in the fire. It all burns up. And we suffer loss because we don't turn away our eyes from looking. It's clear not to look at wicked things. It's worthless things. Most of us won't look at wicked things. We have decided, I will not set before me any wicked thing. But we sure don't mind worthless ones. And that's something that is another part of growing, wasting time, because it's the most valuable commodity. Lust of the eyes, materialism. Jesus said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart will be. He says, I'm going to test you with fire, and you're going to answer for your life.